The third fly in the series I want to talk about today in Thai for you is the muddler minnow, and that's really a classic fly. That started a whole trend of, of deer hair type flies called the spudler and other, other flies called, but this one I've always been interested in, the original muddler minnow, and like my research, I like to find the original. I actually have the original muddler minnow tied, framed in my store that was done by Don Gapin back around 1950. Now he was up in the Nipigon watershed up there in the Nipigon River, which was a tributary of the Great Superior Lakes. And these lakes had big, big brook trout in them. And these large brook trout, these, they were called coasters, would go right up these rivers. They're practically all gone now, but I understand there's still some left coming around and you have a chance of catching some. But this fly was tied to represent a sculpin style minnow to be fished on the bottom for these big coasters, these big brookies. This fly was, you know, back in the 1950s when there wasn't a lot written about fly tying yet, really, except small quantities. This fly here really hit, hit the market and they advertised it and talked about it on Field and Stream magazine. And this is called the muddler minnow. And I'm gonna tie it as close as I can to Don Gapin's original dressing. Many, many years ago, uh, I traded Don's son, Dan Gapin, a whole series of Charlie Brook flies, which Charlie was a friend of mine, so I had a lot of his flies, for one muddler minnow. And I have the original muddler minnow in my store frame to show. So I'm gonna tie a muddler minnow. We're gonna use that 140 denier, really about a three aught thread, which I like. It's a, it's a little heavier thread, but it does a nice job. We're gonna use what they call mottled oak turkey. This is really nice stuff, and you know, starting around 1960, you had trouble buying and getting this model turkey. You can get it on a wild bird, but other than that, they raise all white turkeys now because the women, and a lot of the, the cooks and women would buy turkey, they didn't like the, the different color raw turkey, so we do it white, and the whole bird is white when you buy it at the store. So we, we raise all white turkeys, and we can't get this good feather starting around 1960. So anyway, I'm gonna tie a nice, uh, put a nice tail on it, and we're gonna tie the tail upside down. I have just, well, maybe we'll tie it, we'll tie it down this way. Tie it right down there to have that kind of a swip to it. This is a sculpin now with a big tail, so Don Gappin put in this nice tail right on the end, and we're gonna take what's left over now, instead of cutting it off, we're gonna wind that right up against the shank of the hook. Now we've created a nice flat body, which is what we want. Put a little cement on there. This is the muddler minnow. And then we're gonna put a little silver, not silver, gold. Let's see what I got here. Put a little gold tinsel. We're gonna rib this fly with gold tinsel. Here we go. Gold, excuse me, gold wire. What am I talking about? This is plain gold wire, about a medium size. And we're gonna tie that wire in right up the head. We're leaving a good quarter of an inch bare because that's where they're gonna our muddler part. That's gonna be our head right there out of deer hair. Got that, now we're gonna bring the thread back up again, right along the body, another little coat of cement. And now we're gonna put in a nice silver, excuse me, gold, I can't get my colors straight today. A nice gold ribbing. We're gonna use either a French tinsel, or originally it was a French tinsel. We're gonna use like a, a Mylar style tinsel on this one because I like working with it because it's nice and smooth and it does a nice job. So we're gonna use this wrap, kind of a Mylar wrap. And we always bring the wrap back to the tail right there. And we're gonna give it another coat of cement, a real light coat, and then we're gonna bring it forward. I always wind back and forth so we have a perfect flat body when we're making this fly. Leave plenty of room. This fly is also my favorite fly, tied yellow in a size 10 for brook trout. And I uh, decided I'd do the original one today on camera, but I also tie a little size 10 yellow muddler, and that's my favorite brook trout fly. Now we're gonna rib and wrap this around just to hold the body down. And we're gonna bring this gold wire right on up to there. Now we're up about, I'd say about three quarters of the way leaving a little room for that head and, of course, the wing. That looks pretty good. Now, what oh boy. What Don Gappin did at this point is he took a gray squirrel tail. This is an eastern type squirrel, not the red squirrel we have out west here, or the fox squirrel. This is a gray squirrel. 
There's a lot of variations in squirrels, and I enjoy going to Washington, D.C. and walking on the mall because they have gray squirrels there, but they also have the black phase. And when you get a lot of gray squirrels, they have in Michigan and, and the UP and places like that, Minnesota, but they have a black phase, just like a black wolf, phase of the gray squirrel. All right, we got a good hunk of squirrel tail in there, and we're going to pinch down nice there so we spread it out on the hook. Remember, this is for a sculpin imitation, so we put a lot of right there, and we're going to tie that off and clip that right in there. Good. I pulled it fairly tight. Remember, when you're wrapping something, lightly, lightly, and then pull. Get it where you want it. Helen Shaw, the great lady fly tire, who I had the privilege of knowing a little bit, just passed on about a year and a half, two years ago, but she always said three wraps will hold anything. Hold it once, twice. Pull tight the third wrap and you got it. Cement, and now we're going to make a nice muddler wing, a sculpin wing. And this is that nice, some of these wild birds, you know, we have a big, in, a big hunting season. Almost every state there is some wild turkeys. I'm not a turkey hunter, but I know a couple and I'm able to get a few of these birds when they get a nice turkey and harvest a turkey. So I look for that secondary, again, the secondary, not primary, secondary wing feathers. They're called mottled oak. And what we did there is we combined them both sides. We got that model looking and we want to put it right there, right where my thread is on top. So we're going to hold that tight. Now bring the thread up loosely and make a big loop, a loose loop, and pull straight down. We bring it up again between the fingers, hold it tight, pull it straight down. We don't wrap until we get two or three wraps on there. And then we've got a wing that looks pretty good. Not bad. Let's do another wrap or two. Okay, I like that. That's the muddler minnow. So far, we're doing good. Try to take my time to do it right. The other thing about tying flies, and I want to really emphasize this, this is your world. You don't have to tie the fly like Don Gapin tied it. You could tie the muddler the way you want it, which is fine. So that's, that's the great thing about tying flies. The beginner tire can wrap something on a hook and go out and catch a trout. That's what it's all about, making a fly, having the fun of making your own fly and catching a trout. I use 101% of my own flies. I don't fish with any flies that I didn't tie. I tie everything. And if I'm out of muddler minnows, I have to stay up late at night, which I've done in the summer, and tie some yellow muddlers if I'm going to go brook trout fishing. I love that yellow muddler. Okay, caught a lot of nice fish on it. Now we're ready for the second part, the deer hair part. And what we want to do is put a collar on this fly, a deer hair, and then we want a spun head. Now, the original fly is spun kind of rough looking. We tend to trim ours and look a little nicer now, uh, and that's the fly tying. But Don, when he tied him, he just spun it on, spun it on quick, and fished the fly. And it was a big fly to be fished down deep where the sculpin minnows was. So, or were. Tying the head on a muddler, we, we want to tie a collar first and then the actual spun head. Uh, this is a nice piece of white-tailed deer, and it's got some nice variation in color, some nice tips on it. So what we're going to do is take a tuff, we call it a tuff, T-U-F-F, tuff of hair, and we're going to, we can comb it out or we can just clean it out in our hands, holding the tips, get them about even. If we want, we can even do a hair evener or a hair stacker is the right term. And we're going to stack that hair so all the tips are even. Nice. Don Gapin didn't quite put this time into doing it, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to lay that on the one side or the other, and about three wraps to hold it. Looks good. And with another tuff of hair on the back side, so we have it on both sides, front and back. And we're getting this is a nice gray color. Mule deer has a mouse gray color, really dark gray, but I like, I prefer white tail for most of my time. I notice people come in my store to really the, astonished to see the original muddler minnow hanging there. I mean, you know, with, with a story, and it's authenticated. That was nice. It cost me a dozen Charlie Brooks flies, but we got it. Now we're going to do three wraps, one light, get it started, one a little heavier, and the third one, or maybe four wraps on that and get it. I like that. Now what we're going to do with this extra hair is we're just going to cut it off, cut it, but not real short. We're going to cut it. Just out of my way. Just going to cut it down so it's out of my way. And then we're going to push it back. 
and we're going to put a couple layers of thread in front to hold it. Got it. It's starting to look like a muddler now. Now, this is what Don Gappen did with the original. You'll see in my store when you see the fly. He just spun it loosely like that. And as far as fishing it, that's probably going to work fine. But over the years, us fly tires have all changed things in the head a little bit. We tend to make it a little nicer now and more of a clipped head. So I'm going to do the traditional clipped head. But right about like that is kind of what Don Gappen originally had for the muddler. So we're now we're going to take the same hair, nice deer hair. We're going to take a good clump of hair rather than a tough. Now a little more clump. And we're going to clean it off in our hands, clean some of the flue off. And then we're going to spin this hair. So to spin hair, we're going to hold it. That's a nice clump of hair, maybe about a quarter of an inch in diameter. And we're going to lay the thread over lightly once, get it right, twice, get it right. And the third time we make a wrap, we're going to pull. We haven't pulled so far. We just got it tight in there, but not pulled. We do a third wrap and we're going to pull. And then that hair will spin. And you can take your finger and spin it a little more if you want and push it in tight. An old trick a lot of us use is a toothbrush with the little opening or hole on the end of a toothbrush. You could take that and slip it over or make a tool and push that head tight. Don's weren't quite that tight, but we're going to make mine relatively tight. Now we got about an eighth of an inch left, so we're going to do another tuff of hair. And we're going to clean that off. Actually, what you can do, and I'll do it now for you, too, is see the, see the tips, the guard hairs and the tips on that? You can go ahead and cut them off before you tie it on. Now we just got a piece of deer hair. We cut off the tips. This is kind of a way of doing it. Slide that in. Make one wrap tight, but not too tight. A second wrap right in the same spot tight. And the third wrap now a little tighter, we're going to pull. And if it doesn't spin enough, we're going to turn it to the right with our hand and get it nice and tight. We're going to spin it. All right, spin a little. Couple more wraps. Now we're going to put our finger in there, push it tight right against that fly, holding this solid. You don't want to turn the whole fly. That looks good. And then to finish the fly, maybe a dozen wraps of thread. Get that head nice. That looks good. I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to show you before we're done here this whip finish a little slower just to show you. I, I know I'm doing it quick. Like I said earlier, I learned to do this whip finish in Baker's Hole Campground in 1967. And I added this piece onto my vise, just, just a, a screw. And I tapped it and put a screw in, and that holds my bobbin so I can do my whip finish. So that's my part of it. They taught this whip finish in Long Beach Casting Club in the 1960s. And I learned it from a Long Beach instructor, Ed Mueller, in 1967. So I went back to the Long Beach Casting Club last year and gave a demonstration on casting and also uh, tying flies, and I showed them the way they, the way they were taught and the way they taught whip finish at their own club, which they don't do it anymore. Around, make it, I'm going to do that again. Do it slow. Make a big loop. Take your whole hand and form a loop. Then you take your bobbin and put it out of the way. It's got a lace there. It can't slide. Then take this loop and tuck it underneath the eye. At that point, I take my left hand and I bring it over once. That catches the thread. Now that I have a big loop, I got to very carefully never let go of this thread. I don't want that thread, just this one. But that's kind of odd. So I found if I put my thumb in the center of this loop and always turn my thumb and take the thread toward me, I got the right thread. And I always have the right thread. And I can go as fast as I want. I'm going to go slow. But I can form my head just where I want it. And if I did it right, and I usually always do, occasionally I'll put a knot in there, slide it right through, and I got the perfect whip finish without a tool. And of course, the tool is real nice to you, so I'm going to tilt the fly up in my vise a little bit, and we're going to cement that really good right in the head of that, and then I'm going to clip it for you right on camera. Soak it in good. I like a lot of cement on a fly. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to clip it flat. So you have kind of a muddler looking head. I'm going to do it for you right over here at the vise. But I'm going to cut it flat and flat on top and try to make a sort of a square shape out of this if I can. This kind of I call the muddler shape.
The trick in fishing this fly is to strip it and pulsate it so it looks like it's a darter, it's getting away. And I'm sure Don Gapin fished it up there in Nipigon for these big brookies. He probably put some weight with it and he probably covered the bottom, real close to the bottom, and almost fished it dead drift as well as stripping it a little bit. I'm sure they gave it some life as well. And we're going to go carefully right here behind, not going to take too much off. I want to leave a nice head. We want to leave a little collar on there too. You don't want to take all that collar off. That original collar we want to put on there. Keep it on and just make a few cuts here and there so you can get kind of a, kind of put it back in the vise now. Let's take a look. No, it's pretty good. Not bad. And you can make this head tighter too by putting another wrap on it and really forcing it tight. I put about what I thought is right on this one. I didn't overdo it. You can overdo it if you want. But there's a nice muddler minnow. Nice head on that fly. And let's take one more look here. I want to cut a little off here. It doesn't look right. That's the great thing about tying flies. You spend all winter long tying them and then in the summer you can Go out there and catch some fish on a fly you tied. That's the muddler minnow, the way Don Gappin originally designed the fly about 1950, and that's what I call one of the classic flies.